Thank you very much for having me today here. It is really a pleasure to be uh, with you today alongside Mrs. Melinda Gates, uh, an esteemed co-champion of the G7 Partnership for Women's Digital and Financial Inclusion in Africa. I'm also happy that Nicolas de Rivière, Ambassador and Permanent Representative to the United Nations for France, will be saying some words also on behalf of Minister Le Maire. And I would like to thank the panelists, uh, Minister Lawson, Minister Tolina, Dr. Ondulu, Dr. Suri, and Mrs. Obonai for sharing really your experiences with us today. And also, I would like to thank President of South Africa, Sir uh, Ramaphosa, for his video intervention. The critical development challenges facing Africa today, including safe water and sanitation, fragile health systems, and economic informality, made the continent particularly vulnerable to COVID-19. The crisis has caused severe output losses, which have led to significant food and employment shocks. African women have borne the brunt of all of these shocks. 89% of women in sub-Saharan Africa work in full money, a sector with limited savings and capital, making them particularly vulnerable to economic shocks. Also, women-owned businesses tend to be smaller with less access to financial resources compared to men. So new data suggests that in several sub-Saharan countries, about 60% of women-led small businesses have lost their sources of income, three times more than businesses led by men. In response to the pandemic, over 200 countries have expanded social protection systems, many using digital payments to provide transfers directly into bank accounts or mobile wallets. South Africa, Togo, Burkina Faso, Zambia, and Nigeria all scaled up rapidly, specifically targeting women. These programs provide an economic lifeline for very vulnerable people and are really the key entry point to the formal financial system. Digital payments are therefore key to COVID-19 response and are really essential for future recovery efforts. Now, whilst financial inclusion is particularly important for women's economic empowerment, today, 60% of the 400 million financially excluded adults in the whole continent are actually women. So what is standing in our way to make digital financial inclusion for women a reality? First of all, access to a mobile telephone and internet connection is an extremely necessary starting point. But Sub-Saharan Africa has a 41% gender gap with regards to mobile internet use. This disparity could be reduced. Also, having regulation in place that allows for mobile money and agents that are close to where women live and work is really an important prerequisite to use digital financial services for COVID-19 response. There still also remains a 9% gender gap in ID between men and women in Sub-Saharan Africa. People without a government recognized proof of identity often cannot open accounts and are shut off of the formal financial system. Tiered customer due diligence processes are really needed to quickly onboard beneficiaries for mobile wallets and smaller value accounts. And lastly, but not least, consumer protection policies are also key to ensure that the use and access to digital financial services does not increase the digital divide or gender inequality. Now, without these prerequisites in place, countries could be left behind, relying on cash-based manual systems that are extremely costly and prone to leakages. These enablers will also provide an entrance for women participation on digital economy, including e-commerce platforms and telehealth services. Now, of course, the crisis response has not stopped at payments only. Governments have supported businesses with emergency credit lines and boasted the reach of credit guarantee programs. These measures help businesses weather the storm, of course. 
But it is important these programs target those entrepreneurs who need it the most and are made available through financial institutions that cater to them, such as microfinance institutions and cooperatives. The role of fintech sector is in supporting COVID-19 response really proves critical. They play an important role in developing tailored and accessible financial products. This include remittances, which are an important lifeline during the crisis, but also small and flexible working capital loans. Therefore, to create an innovative and safe regulatory environment for these new actors is more important than ever. The G7 partnership offers an important opportunity to unlock digital financial inclusion for women so that women can live more productive and have safer lives. We must now scale up action through the partnership with specific targets in order to monitor and accelerate progress. I would really like to thank again Melinda Gates and the French government for the co-championship of this partnership and of course the commitment of African policymakers to make digital financial inclusion for women a reality. Thank you very much.